So we are pretty far into Oscar season now. Time has gone by that fast, and my third most anticipated movie of the Oscar season has come out, and I am here to review it. This is the third film that I know of coming from director Steve McQueen, his two previous films being Hunger and Shame, both of which I have not seen. But what I've got from him, um, you know, after seeing this movie and hearing from, about his other movies, um, is that he's really a director who pulls no punches and really challenges you as an audience member. I mean, there's a lot of uh, controversy surrounding this movie, that it's just, you know, the, the most brutal depiction of slavery you're, you've ever seen, uh, that it's, you know, horrifically violent and just showcases, uh, you know, the, the horror of slavery in great detail. Now, personally, um, movies about racism have been interesting me less and less lately. Um, I just think that, I mean, there are so many movies and books about racism, and at this point, I don't think that any racists or any people that actually still believe in slavery will be convinced um, otherwise uh, by a movie. And although 12 Years a Slave probably won't be the movie that changes their mind first, uh, it should rid all doubt that people have exaggerated at all the horrors and the terror of what slavery was and just how horrific and brutal it was. 12 Years a Slave, adapted from the novel of the same name, um, is about Solomon Northup, who is a free-born African-American in the 1800s. He is kidnapped and uh, sold into slavery, even though he was not born a slave, and then has to spend 12 years, uh, you know, just experiencing what slaves are going through, uh, and realizing how privileged he was as a free man. Solomon Northup was a real person, and uh, this is based off his autobiography, and uh, I hope I'm saying this right, uh, Chiwetel Ejiofer plays him in this film. It's an absolute all-star uh, supporting cast from with performances from Michael Fassbender, Benedict Cumberbatch, Paul Dano, Paul Giamatti, Scoot McNary, Sarah Paulson, Brad Pitt, and Taron Killam for some reason. And this movie has some of the absolute best performances of the year. Uh, Chiwetel Ejiofer in what I would call his breakout role, even though he has been acting for quite a while, uh, I would definitely say this is his uh, breakthrough role and should get him a lot more uh, work because he is absolutely phenomenal in this film. It really helped that uh, this character was such a likable person, and, de and just to have to see him go through all this when he was born a free person and, you know, was just uh, being sold for money. Uh, and has to go through all this. I mean, it's just absolutely heartbreaking. Now, the first plantation uh, this character works on um, is owned by Benedict Cumberbatch's character, and that's also where uh, Paul Dano comes in. And uh, Benedict Cumberbatch kind of plays the more, you know, good-hearted, uh, you know, slave owner, where Paul Dano is like, you know, the absolute piece of shit. And Paul Dano, I mean, his face has always helped how hateable he is. Uh, yeah, he's just a despicable character in this. And after a really bad relationship uh, between Solomon Northup and Paul Dano's character, he gets sent to the plantation of Master Epps, uh, played by Michael Fassbender, who is far, far worse than uh, anything he could have imagined and is just an absolutely cruel, despicable, uh, just evil person, one of the most evil villains I have seen in a while, even worse than Django. In fact, this character is so horrifically cruel, and the movie is able to make us hate him so much that I think Michael Fassbender deserves a Best Supporting Actor award for this, as I think he gives the best supporting performance of the whole year. And I would say that uh, this performance is comparable to Ray Fiennes' performance in Schindler's List. And really what makes this um, such a memorable character, and more memorable than a lot of the other um, uh, slave owners and, you know, evil uh, slavers that have been portrayed in movies, and what makes this uh, stand out amongst those, is that these slave owners are treated as people, despicable people, but human beings. We see every, we, we get to see the emotions of each and every single character, uh, how, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, he play, his, he's a slave owner, but like a good person, like he's not even like a villain in the movie, but we get to see his bad side as well. And so then when we see Michael Fassbender's character, and just, you know, how we see a little bit of the good side in him, and see, see how, we, you know, he kind of falls in love with one of his slaves, and I, you know, I, I'll take that back, not the good side in him, but just kind of, you know, the, the lust inside him, and uh, we get to see kind of all his emotions, and just, uh, that makes his bad side really stand out more, I think. And like I said, I mean, Steve McQueen pulls absolutely no punches. Uh, this is the most violent, um, hard-to-sit-through uh, movie about slavery I've ever seen. There are just uh, scenes that go on forever that are incredibly tough to watch. Uh, I mean, this is not for the squeamish, but I mean, if you want a realistic, really blunt um, portrayal of slavery and how horrific it was, uh, then you should see this movie. The score in this movie is absolutely mesmerizing. The cinematography is incredible. Uh, just how beautiful the cinematography is just makes the movie all the more brutal. 
I still didn't cry in the movie because apparently my tear ducts haven't worked for the past five years. But if my tear ducts did work, I probably would have cried, as pretty much everyone in my theater has, and everyone I know who has seen it has cried. So be ready to cry. Definitely seek this one out. Um, I mean, if you have the gut to, uh, it's one of the best movies of the year. Absolutely, nine and a half out of ten. Uh, hopefully this will get nominated for uh, Best Picture if it doesn't scare the Academy Awards away uh, and they're able to sit through it. Usually they aren't, they don't really like daring movies, but I mean hopefully this will get through to them and they'll nominate this. Steve McQueen absolutely uh, deserves a Best Director nomination if not a win. Um, Michael Fassbender deserves an award. Chiwetel Ejiofor deser deserves a nomination. Uh, lots of people in this movie deserve nominations. Can't say it enough. One of the best movies of the year. See it and I will see you later.